Items of fruit and cake. If you've seen one tarantula wrangling pyromaniac or maphrodite dwarf, you've seen them all, right? Wrong. That's why you need to watch Talk Soup. We're coming up next, right here on E. Come on. Meet our pal, Dead Little Joey. I am certifiably insane. You want to show you how to make a good... doesn't get any more exciting than this. Broadcasting from the very exciting E! Entertainment Television Studios. Welcome to Talk Soup, everybody. I'm Roger Lodge in for John Henson, who I guess, what, he's out selling Pontiacs today? Making wow. some pretty good coin, from what I understand. Do we have that cha-ching? We don't have that? Well, well, we'll fix that in post. He'll be back Friday for the fourth annual Guacamole Bowl. Guac Bowl, Guac Bowl, Guac Bowl, Guac Bowl. Hey, there's only three Guac oh. Bowls in the prompter, guys. Uh, by the way, before we get started, I do have to mention today... I had no idea, but I guess it's the birthday of the legendary DeForest Kelly, Star Whoa. Trek's Dr. McCoy, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's terrific. Now, in honor of this very special occasion, I thought we'd play a little, you know, how about some of his CD? Oh, yeah. Do we have that? Oh, Doctor! Oh, yeah, beam this up. Oh, yeah, beam, 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 beam this up. Oh, Doctor! Oh, oh Doctor! Oh, Terrific stuff. All right, coming up on the big show, ladies and gentlemen, I kid you not, we've got a woman who goes to the hospital for a checkup and wakes up in the morgue. Plus, we've got some indoor skydiving and the return, the very much anticipated return, of dead little Joey. I'm sick of being dead. I want to live. <laughs> Poor little scamp. Still kind of a cute kid, despite all the rotting flesh. Anyway, first up, before we roll our opening highlight, let's meet the members of this very special bisexual love triangle who are featured in it. First, there's LaTanya. She's an 18-year-old stripper and call girl, and she's been seeing Craig for six months. And during that time, she's also been seeing Tracy, her lesbian lover. Hey, did somebody say Springer? You cannot do the things that she do, baby. Because if she you could, I would only be with you. I've been with her for a year. How long I've been with you for six months? I see her every day. I see her every day. Got with her before we got here. Why you what? Why you what? Go ahead, you want to get home. She gonna stop home what I got right here. Ain't Hold time out. I got into, who are you? This is my girl. Uh, this you know what I'm saying? Your, na your name is... Uh, I guess later in the show, Craig felt very compelled to show exactly how real he is. Time for music, Jerry. Come out, come out for music. For what? Come out to do the same thing she's doing, baby. The same exact thing you're doing. The same exact thing you're doing. Hey, guys, not so quick to laugh. Did you know that in some cultures, dropping trow and shaking one's booty is considered to be a great sign of respect? Wow. That's right. That's right. However, the uh, leopard skin thong, however, that's, uh, that's tacky in any society. Thursday on Jerry Springer, guests will give their cheating lovers one more shot at monogamy. Tune in as a woman tells her boyfriend that 20 extramarital affairs is her absolute limit. 21, well, hey, that's where she draws the line. That's Thursday on Jerry. Now, if you've ever visited the Grand Old Opry, you know the snack food of choice among country music fans is the Goo Goo Cluster Bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duh. Like primetime country host Gary Chapman, hey, it's sweet and nutty. As you'll see up next, Gary, or as we like to call him, the Gerster, will take that analogy one step further by becoming a human chocolate bar. And helping him create this hilarious bit of comedy will be a country music legend named Whispering Bill Anderson. Take a look. They want to show you how to make a good. I'd love to know. Right, yeah. you, you, my keep kids your love eye, you keep your eye right there on the uh, on the. Do the no way. You've, you've got like. Uh, you've got. Uh, am I? I'm sorry. I don't you just, think I. You sit there and study the finished product, and right. I'm going to show you how we make it. First, okay. You start with that delicious, hot, creamy goo. Gary. Yes, sir. I think. 
I think you better put these on. Excuse me? You better put these goggles for, on. For cooking? No, 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 for, cause, so you can see a lot clearer okay. exactly what we're doing. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. All right, now the first thing you do to make a goo-goo, I've been to the Standard Candy Company. Yes? You start with that delicious, creamy milk chocolate. Oh. That's the first thing that you do. All right, and then you go down to Georgia and you get some of those delicious hot roasted Georgia peanuts. And then, of course, you top off the goo-goo. What would a goo-goo be without marshmallows? There is how you make the official candy of the Grand Ole Opry. Go get a goo-goo. It's good. Nickelodeon is going to be so jealous that they didn't think of that. Wow. Incidentally, whispering Bill Anderson, his big hits include My Life, Still, and, of course, I am Goo Goo Man! Yeah, baby. Thursday on PTC, Gary Taps is toes to the music of country supergroup Sawyer Brown. They'll perform their latest hit single, the title of which escapes me right now, but, but you guys know that they got their start on Star Search? Oh, they sure did. Here. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I actually auditioned for Star Search. No yeah. way. Yeah, a little comedy bit. Well, what happened? Yeah. Uh, they went with an actor. Oh. Okay, Dan, you've got a lot of explaining to do, my friend. First of all, you cheated on your wife, Cheryl, after she had your first child one year ago. And then when she gave you the chance to confess, you lied about it. Ooh, now, if wow. that weren't bad enough, you kept on sleeping with the other woman as well. Wow. Come on, Dan, I think we expected a little more out of you than that. Let's see if Sally can get you to explain your rakish behavior. It was, it was a getaway. I just, uh, it was an escape. I know, I know that's no excuse. But you promised her once that you'd stop and you'd put the marriage back together, but you didn't stop, you continued. Is that correct? Yes. And I, I lied. I was caught in a lie. I kept going back to her. I was drawn to her. When, when I was with her, it was like, it was like another, being with another guy. We partied all the time. Then I'd come home and my lifestyle was just, it's, Two different things. Yeah. Of course it's different. Oh, wait, oh. Yeah, cheater. Where what do you want to have happen now? Our marriage is gonna be together. I have a child. I love my wife. We're gonna shut the f up, right? Folks, I hope we never lose sight of that one simple and very important fact. The Sally Show is beautiful. Yes. Thursday on Sally, meet parents whose grown kids have moved back home. That sounds familiar. They say they're tired of playing made and cook to the, shall we say, disillusioned freeloaders. Coming up later on Talk Soup, a former corpse reveals what it's like on the other side. Plus, it's skydiving for wussies. But first, dead little Joey's back, and he's deader than ever. See you in a minute. Welcome back to Talk Soup. Consider us your halfway home away from your halfway home. I'm Brad Pitt. I'm sitting in for John Henson, who, of course, is in New Orleans at the big Nat P convention. Oh, yeah. Now, is it Nat P or Nat P? Whatever you want. Na okay, well, that's where he is, and he'll be back Friday. Hey, you guys remember, of course, the fabulous slim organ body? Oh, remember yeah, this guy? Yeah, 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 He's yeah, terrific. Yeah, yeah. And he, of course, for you folks who don't know, was a character on The Conan Show who wore his organs outside of his body. Mm -hmm. You see, w the reason being, he exposed them to teach children valuable lessons about anatomy. And in this classic Conan clip, Slim brings another educational character along for the ride. His name is Dead Little Joey. Enjoy. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Hey, everyone, look. It's our pal, Dead Little Joey. <laughs> What seems to be wrong, dead little Joey? I'm sick of being dead. I want to live. <laughs> Sorry, you didn't eat right, so now you have to be dead. Like all kids that don't take good care of their bodies. Oh, oh. oh. Why don't you tell me about it? We're all ears. I'm sorry, 
what the hell is going on here? Hi, Conan. Meet our pal, dead little Joey. Yeah, would you... Liz, would you get rid of this awful thing right now, please? It is nice to see that Screech has something to do when Saved Whoa, by the Bell yeah. gets canceled. Exactly. Uh, but, you know, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, it wasn't like... I am Google Man! Oh, <laughs> see? I told you. Thursday on Late Night, Conan trades quips with comedian Jim Brewer. Jim can currently be seen as the, as the wise guy on Saturday Night Live, as well as starring in the blockbuster film Half-Baked. All right, now it's time to enjoy the comedy of John Henton. Oh, what? Uh, John Henton. Oh. That's Henton, you see. He spells his name with a T, and plus he's black, and there's no, there's no skunk spot on his head. Oh. You with me? Okay. Now, as TV fans may remember, Henton was a regular on the series Living Single, and currently he works the comedy club circuit. There's the funny man now telling Keenan about a recent Oprah interview. I guess this is a big hot topic or something. I don't know. It's an Oprah interview with Janet Jackson. Oh, child, I was watching Oprah, and Janet Jackson was on. Oh, yeah, you got to, uh, yeah Janet Jackson. Would y'all see that with Janet Jackson? Yeah. And Oprah, Oprah say, um, girl, I got something to ask you, and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, and this is real personal, so I'm thinking, oh, we're going to get the scoop. Right, right, here we right, go, yeah. right? And she said, what was this uh, bad moment that you had as a kid? Janet go up there, and she say, one time I was in the classroom, and I had to go up to the chalkboard and do a problem, and the teacher said I couldn't do it. And the teacher said, oh, Janet, anybody can do this. And that just devastated her. <laughs> I'm saying, Janet, that's all? <laughs> In your family, you got Latoya? <laughs> Nose all messed up doing porno movies? <laughs> Joe been kicking everybody's ass for 40 years? <laughs> and, I mean, it's like Michael is white. <laughs> That might mess me up a little bit. Maybe my son's so wife playing with <laughs> chips and little boys and stuff. And Lord knows what happened to Tito. Boy, the bald goatee look is huge this year, huh? Ev uh, evidently, some of Hinton's rage toward the Jackson clan may have been fueled by Robitussin. I guess he had a really bad flu lately, and the label plainly read, use care when operating dangerous machinery or making fun of the Jackson clan. Oh, yeah. Thursday, Keenan chats it up with actress Natalie DeSell. She recently starred with David Justice's ex-wife in the hit comedy, Baps. I saw that. It was really good, actually. Now, if you've contemplated skydiving but are afraid of heights, you may want to pay close attention to our next highlight. It features this morning correspondent, Jose Diaz Ballard. Is it Ballard? Ballard. Of course. He's terrific. Well, he engages in a little indoor skydiving. But here's the catch. You still fly high above the ground, but it's only a few feet, and there's padded walls and nets what? in case something goes awry. Hmm. Up next, we'll find out why it's been called the latest thrill sport for wussies. I think I would, Mark, only because I am certifiably insane, and because <laughs> uh, my, my producer, Andy Jones, happens to be the same. Yeah. Right. So I think we would do it, but... but uh, Richard Dover, who was a guy that was uh, helping me around today, uh, you know, if you do enough of this, as Hattie says, if you do enough of this, I think it really would prepare you for, uh, you know, the real skydiving. That sensation, because when I was going to get out of the airplane, and I don't know how fast the air was going by, 100 or so miles per hour, it's just scary to think of jumping out there in that wind. I asked the instructor, what if my parachute doesn't open? He said, you have a reserve. I said, what if my reserve doesn't open? He said, then it's not your day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jose, do you get to keep those cool? Those look like pajamas or something that you're wearing. You well, they're, they're the latest in skydiving fashion wear, and, and I've seen a few people in Las Vegas just walking around town with them, uh, and they don't have anything to do with the skydiving thing. But that's a whole different story, if you know what I'm saying. We know what you're saying. Keep in mind, folks, the indoor skydiving costs $25 for three minutes. And indoor skydiving? What a wimp! Real men jump out of planes. Evidently, you made a friend. Yeah, we're very close. Yeah, we could see that. <laughs>
Very impressive. Still to come on this skunk-free edition of Talk Soup, a woman is dead for six hours. Stay with me, Alan. She uh, is dead for six hours and lives to tell about it. Hear her beyond and backstory a little bit later. And straight ahead, Christina Ferrari talks about her diminished sex drive. Find out how she still finds the will to make Whoopi. You're watching Talk Soup. We'll see you in a minute. Say ooh. your choice for top Hollywood entertainment. With pay-per-view, the hits come right into your home, hassle-free, instantly. It's the easy way to treat friends and family to first-run fun. And everyone watches for one low price, making pay-per-view one of the best entertainment values around. Just pick the showing you want to see and follow the simple pay-per-view ordering instructions. Before you know it, you'll be enjoying the movie of your choice right in your home. Big hits, small price. There's nothing to it when you pay-per-view it. Coming at you like a training bra at a Hanson concert, this is Talk Soup. I'm Donny Osmond. Now, usually the Home and Family Show is a conservative program, but this highlight features a, shall we say, randy Christina Ferrari discussing her diminished sex drive. Apparently, she went on Oprah. Everyone's going on Oprah, I guess, these days. And she revealed her embarrassing problem before an entire nation. But fear not, ladies and gentlemen, this Ferrari's back in high gear. Yeah, baby! What about the moment in the car? With all... <laughs> yeah, Christina. I am driving... Wait, we were last Friday, and we went to a meeting, this and I'm sitting... Week. This was last Friday. I'm sitting in a meeting, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching the man across from me talk to me, and all of a sudden I go, we have to go. And Tony said, I said, we have to go. We just, we just have to go. <laughs> so we got, we go into the car, and I said to Tony, you have to pull over, you have to pull over. What happened was, with all the herbs and the testosterone cream, I now I know what it's like for a man. I'm a, I know what it's like now for a man when they get an urge. The urge was so overwhelming that I said, I, 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 now. Get a room. Now. Get a room. I wonder if she drives a stick shift. But Where's the thing, the rim shot, come on. Thursday on Home and Family, get some Super Bowl party tips. The gang will show you how to set up your couch and not uh, expect to see the Buffalo Bills. All right, actor-comedian Dave Chappelle has made his mark in Hollywood by appearing in such films as The Nutty Professor and Robin Hood, Men in Tights. His new film, well, that's called Half-Baked, and it relies heavily on drug humor. A drug theme can also be seen in this very exciting Daily Show highlight. Here's Dave tackling Craig Kilborn's challenging five questions. Where are the Winter Olympics being held this year? Someplace snowy. Can we accept that? Someplace snowy. Nagano, Japan. We cannot accept that. I'm sorry. Well, it's good, though. You're, you're on the right track. Nagano, Japan? Nagano, Japan. Oh. Uh, who did, How did I not know that? I don't know. Who did Anson Williams play in Happy Days? Anson Williams? Of course, that's Potsy. Correct. Of course, that's Potsy. Huh? One. That's one. Give me... Three alternative names for a marijuana cigarette. Three different names. All right. Blunt, method, spliff. Yes. Yeah. Whatever you say. I have no idea. Whatever you say. I can't get there wrong. All I got to do is say those are the black names, Craig. Right. Yeah. There you have it there. Daily Show highlight. And Dave calls his new film Half-Baked, Train Spotting for Reefer. That's a lot of hooey. <laughs> Coming up later, ladies and gentlemen, after the break, it's our soup du jour. In just a moment, a woman goes in for a routine checkup and wakes up, well, dead. See you in a minute. Monday, to the speed you need. I'm Norm MacDonald, and you're watching E! Entertainment Television. If it's happening in the world of entertainment, it's happening on E! Mmm. Welcome back, everybody. This is Talk Soup, and I am David Hasselhoff. Up next, a tale from beyond and back. I guess we'll fix that in post. <laughs> Recently, Kathy had a near-death experience, and unlike many other near-death survivors, Kathy remembers the details of it very clearly. The experience occurred after she went to the hospital for a routine checkup, I guess, and, and she found out that she had a severely low red blood cell count. For the rest of this eerie tale, we turn it over to who else 
but Montel Williams and his special guest, psychic Sylvia Brown. You were in the hospital for a few days, and you passed out, I guess, correct? Well, I kind of went to sleep. Went to sleep. Where did you wake up at, Kathy? The morgue. With your toes tied together and a tag dangling off your foot? That's true. They thought you were dead? That's what they the said. The doctors thought she was dead. They put her in the morgue with the rest of the people and all around. I would have woke up and said, oh. Me too. I would have been booking. So then they took you back upstairs, right? I eventually. Guess, eventually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a good thing the mortician didn't get a hold of you. you know, cause, well, I think they were about ready to do that. They were supposed to do the autopsy on me three hours before, but somebody that supposedly screwed up. My opinion, they didn't screw it up because no, they weren't supposed to they do weren't it. Supposed to do it. Yeah. So, okay, so now explain to us what happened when you were, during that six and a half hour period of time that you were in the morgue, what did you see? What do you remember? Oh, I remember everything. Um, I was kind of wished out of my body, and I was in a place like a submarine. Hmm, so I, apparently the afterlife is a lot like the Captain Nemo ride at Disney World. <laughs> All righty then, Thursday on Montel, guests will demand the truth and nothing but from their lying lovers. Tune in as a married guy confesses about doing the wild thing with another girl. Tomorrow on Talk Soup, meet a guy who weighs more than 700 pounds. Of course, all my weight is in the front of me or in my belly. She's gonna help me to roll over. So just to get started, there's a lot of hurt. That wraps up this episode of Talk Soup. I'm Roger Lodge. John Henson, when's he going to be back? Friday? There you go. He'll be back Friday. But guess what? I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, baby.